but Falau is in a position of privilege and he can use his voice for good. And if he can't, then just shut up and keep those bigoted, ignorant opinions to yourself. I think as well as that, you've got like, when, when, you're, when you hear a, a role model speak like that and with young people as well, when, you know, some of them could be going through a difficult time yeah. when it comes to their sex sexuality and hearing that, it's hugely harmful. Play by Play on Sports Joe and Her. Brought to you by AIG, in support of 20 by 20. Hello and welcome to Play by Play. I'm Jenny Murphy. On this week, we are joined by, again, Need Mac Boy, and Conan Doherty. Yeah. Who, Woo. interesting fact, is able, well, I'm not sure if he's able to do it now, but once held a plank for 10 and a half minutes. Fake news. Seconds, <laughs> Genuinely, yeah. that's horrific. It helped that I was like 10 and a half stone at the what, time. Why so. though? Why were you doing it? <laughs> it was a competition. It was like our senior football team back home in Derry. We were See. going to, um, we had gone <laughs> to Cookstown to do this, uh, all these fitness tests and stuff and got to the plank and everyone was dropping after a minute, 90 seconds, two minutes. And well, all that yeah. nonsense. All and, the amateurs. Uh, civilian. It was, it was civilian. me who was a young lad in the team at the time and like the oldest person who was like 41 and we were going like five, six minutes and I got up and sort of said to him at one stage and you were shaking like, you might as well drop because I'm not going to drop and then everyone was like oh you have to win this now. <laughs> so I hate, I when, did, you, like, I hate yeah. when you shoot yourself in the foot yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. actually well, when you're giving worry. it the big action then you're like oh no look what I've done to myself I have to, <laughs> no, keep, I, going. Yeah, I have to keep going. <laughs> and what nobody knows is that I had a plan on dropping a 10 and I just I can't keep going like, yeah. but he must have thought the same he dropped the 10 so oh, I just kept so going like to... you know the victory lap then just and the crowd were going Longest, crazy. have you do you hold any fitness records or like any ones that you're like that's an area that I was strong in um so probably not cardio I'm probably pretty middle of the pack or up a bit, up top half of the pack. Okay. But okay. Uh, strength wise, yeah, I'd be strong, like in nice. the trap. And probably the counter movement jump's good too. Okay, nice. Mm. You? Nice. No. <laughs> no. Um, the front rows just absolutely smashed me in strength, strength stuff in the gym. And then, pff, like, Ali Miller, I'm not going to win in a speed race against her. So, oh, yeah. I was, uh, it would be a bit different. Everyone's. <sighs> The strikes are Everyone has their specific Niche. jobs that they, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then there's like the middle, the middle of the ground kind of, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. You, you win on crazy, crazy oh, pants. I know I don't. I actually definitely don't. That like, no. When I watch you, pay, like you hit three people in a row, you get up and the person's still down and you hit the next person. Yeah, that's, that's just, they ran the wrong you direction. You suffer too many concussions. <laughs> have to give that up. <laughs> I can't remember how it's, uh, it happened so long ago. Yeah. Anyway, enough about uh, me. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about you, Mackers, or we leave it for a little bit uh, later in the show. I don't know if you've realised, Conan, but we're sitting beside uh, the centre forward that made the 2019 uh, Division 1 team of the Little National League. You don't know what I really... They brought me pen just to get an autograph. Oh, <laughs> nice. Don't worry, we'll save the mortification that you have now for a little bit later. Um, we're going to move on. Firstly, right, myself and Conor were talking about this earlier. Um, Mon and senior uh, footballer, Conor McCarthy, he was playing for Cabin on Saturday, and he's a student in UCD. You're also a student, not in UCD. So. And he got a, basically a helicopter up to Cabin um, for the Ulster Championship. So you got on with five minutes to go in the first half. What is, have you ever gone to, maybe not helicopter, like Mission Impossible lengths, but the crazy lengths that you've gone to, to make a game or training, or can you think of anybody else that has done something like that? Lily Peat did something similar, Lindsay Peat. Um, and yeah. when she played with Dublin, I think she was like competing at a really high level in basketball and they flew her down after a basketball game to play a national league game as well so she did something crazy like that i think but i think she only made like the last 15 minutes 15 minutes mm. i was like oh there's a lot of money to spend at that time on <laughs> a helicopter <laughs> and we were already losing my well, time I'm, I'm, I'm totally <laughs> reading into this being like was not worth it that's that's what i'm getting <laughs> lily if you're oh. listening <laughs> if you're listening you should have gone Ryanair <laughs> or stayed at home. You should have just stayed at the basketball. Yeah, yeah. No. She was lethal when she played well. She was so good. But I just thought it was crazy at the time. Going to such lengths, you know. Oh, I know there's loads of that, that type of thing happening. I think there's always clashes. Oh, no, sorry, that was an exam. But there's often clashes, isn't there, with the Sigerson Cup and mm -hmm. 
the you know the Sigerson Cup yeah, and the Kieran Malloy um, last year playing two for games in a day Cora Finn in the All Ireland yeah. Club semi final and then they won and like they, they they got a man sent off after like two minutes there were fourteen mm. men they won by a point and then he had to get like a Garda escort from Offaly up to Santry to play in the Sigerson final yeah and came on just at the start of the second half and yeah <laughs> it used to happen way more in ladies football um when we were younger. But now, because people are playing like underage football and then adult football, I'm sure you, you would presume that you can schedule them separately, but yeah. lots of people are playing up. But it doesn't happen as much anymore. We spoke about that in another episode where the kids don't play up into yeah. the adult ranks anymore. But yeah, there used to be mad clashes. People playing like seven and eight games in a week, mad stuff like that, but it doesn't happen as much. But what are you like exam wise? Like, because obviously it's May, June now, and people, yeah. like, I used to coach on their 16 team, and like this time of the year used to drive me insane because yeah. suddenly you just have seven people training. Yeah. And it's like you are not studying all this time. You can take an hour and a half out and come But, to but I think it's just, especially like, you know, like leaving sir, junior sir, like everyone, it's like I remember when I was doing it, it was the first bloody question that you were asked. Like, how's the, how's the studying going? How's the leaving sir going? And it was like, I was a ball of stress for, for all that year. Now I was still doing playing basketball at school and, and Gaelic and soccer up in Piedmont and like that's dry up. I had to yeah. I had to cut a bit of it. But I know if that I just focused on studying and didn't play any sport, I would have probably gone mad. Like it was definitely a, a stress reliever for me. I didn't have to think about, you know, I can't even think about the makeup of a cell now. It's all gone and forgotten. And <laughs> yeah. But like that was sport was definitely good for me to it, like even now when I'm in, in work and stuff, I like I need to get out of the office for a little bit, even for a walk, to like just think about something else and then get back into. I'm more productive. I'm more productive when I exercise. Um, we find it a lot with a club. Yeah, there's a lot of girls like doing leave and search and stuff, and peop Yeah, there wouldn't be as many people are trying. I'm doing actually doing exams at the minute, the end of my masters, and I would find it really difficult to go training and I, I probably feel as though I'm not preparing for training and stuff the same way because you're just sitting in the library for five hours and then you're going training whereas like when you're in work you're probably moving around or you have like a two hour break before training and you can like mobilize or whatever but I actually feel like it's the exams are negatively impacting my preparation but Nick and, and the people involved with Dublin will be really good in the sense that they know you're, they have an awareness of your schedule. They know you're doing exams, so they kind of make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position where you'd be getting an injury. But it definitely, I think, it's really hard to balance. Um, some some people aren't as bad as me, but I think I have a bit of a panic and a bit of stress. Uh, like exams cause me anxiety, so I try to give it as much possible time to study as po as I can. But uh, yeah, some people are much better at, at striking a balance, whereas I just, yeah. I, I definitely, I think it would, and now it's only a week, so it's fine, do you know what I mean? Impacting your training for mm. a week, but it still is annoying. <laughs> well, like Malloy, um, one, you, of the, one of the girls on the team. If you're trying to work then yeah, exams and play at a high level, I think it can be very stressful and I think could end up impacting people's like mental health. I'm just really lucky that the person I'm involved with, the management team that I'm involved with, are so aware of that type of thing, you know, the kind of way overload in terms of just... Mm mental health which is something that probably wasn't people weren't as aware of 10 years ago i don't know well i got like malloy was she was trained in qualified doctor but i remember like in when we were training at hotel like she'd have she'd be practicing stitching on bananas oh. so we'd all be like oh, can we have a go of that or whatever God. and like it was like entertaining for us but then we'd all have like our cups of tea and purple snacks and malloy would have to be studying and even the first time we'd ever won the six nations was in 2013 and um, her finished in Italy, it was 6-3, horrendous conditions. But obviously we were, we were celebrating and the pitch was frozen. It was like, it was one of the worst pitches I've ever played on. Uh, like that includes Gaelic football, soccer. It was, or I, well, I, I wasn't actually playing. I was injured, so I was on the bench, but it was one of the, it was one of the worst pitches that I could have played on. Um, so I was sitting on the, the sideline and Malloy, um, we were celebrating, obviously some of our family had come and uh, the Italians had headed in, used up all the hot water and like there's the images of us were all, it was vague green, but most mostly brown, muck, I think muck I remember, everywhere. Yeah. And so the showers were cold. Malloy got, she actually genuinely got hypothermia um, and she had to study for a huge exam the next day. So she had hypothermia 
we were all like drinking limoncello everywhere. We drank in Parchroy, in Barabaggio, and poor Malloy had to like freeze and go back on the books. We we Grim. actually um, the Dublin captain Sinead her and she's she one of my club club mates. But her I don't know if you know her nickname. Do you? Like everyone calls her it. Her nickname's a nerd. Um, do you know Emma Dunn? She used to play soccer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Emma Dunn. She's gas. So we were on the bus one day and we were going down the country, five hour trip, probably Mayo or Cork or something, Donegal probably. And uh, she had her books out and Emma Dunn was like, you are a nerd. What are you doing? She nerd. So everyone was calling her she nerd. But now her name is nerd. And like every management that come in, call her nerd. Like nobody calls her Sinead. Nobody calls her a her. And it's just nerd. And it just came from that, that thing of studying on the bus. I, I wouldn't mind. Emma Dunn is a massive nerd as well. She's there like, and like physio, box ticked. Doctor, box ticked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, played I know, for Dublin. I think she played for Ireland soccer. at some, so, yeah. yeah. Like, Emma, you're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but she used banter on the bus. Not that Sinead isn't banter, but when she was studying for her accountancy exams, I mean... Yeah, she was flashing math those five hours on the oh, bus. Oh, man. It's you, like you, 1980s rom-com sort of banter. Is it? Uh, nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not Sinead. You're a Chineur. So we were all just like, that's amazing. <laughs> but everyone's listening to me like, oh, since Commons came on, the, the show's taken a massive dip. <laughs> <laughs> Random or, yeah, or, Sorry, sorry. Okay, right, so. That's so harsh. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that was great. We we're bringing a lot of joy. Jen's done three shows. She thinks she's a. You have done the epic. same amount of shows. As I don't me. think I'm unreal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I'm very this good, is... but I'm not unreal just yet. You were the one that texted me, being oh like, God. "Please mention me team. being team no. of the year." Jen, make sure you get this into the show. Make sure that you say that, like, obviously, if there was a captaincy, I would have got the band as well. But they yeah. don't mention that. We probably exactly. should. So, by yeah. the way, I can pull out my phone and read the tweets and the mass amount of selfies that you got celebrating. <laughs> Fine. Um, speaking <laughs> of <laughs> speaking of celebrations, uh, Leon Barcelona Champions League final. Uh, finished 4 1. Don't know if you, any of you guys got to see um, any of the game. Oh, like serious. Leon, Leon, serious, serious team. Um, I was coming into that being like, oh, like Barcelona Chance, might yeah. put up a fight, but uh, a hat trick within 17 minutes for Hedeberg. Now they'd scored. Who scored the first goal? You should probably know well, this. Leon, yeah, Leon yeah well, Leon's, Leon's yeah, got the first got goal the first and then Hedeberg. Goals, yeah. So, um, and like there were nice goals as well, like that. So sorry. Anyway, there they, there was an amazing article. I strongly recommend you read it if you haven't by the New York Times. And they were basically talking about which is the most dominant team in uh, sports at the moment. And they kind of picked on like the New England Patriots, serious amount of su Super Bowls. They have created a dynasty. Then like the Golden State Warriors are championship city. And um, like we can talk closer to home about the Cork Ladies footballers. Then Man City. <laughs> oh, the pops are endless. <laughs> Go on, no, it's fair. Okay, fair. It's okay. True. Well, no, like that streak is it's an unbelievable, epic, yeah. and like it's an epic streak. And it's coming back as well. You know, it's going to start again now this year. As well, oh, right? gee. Oh, I love the way he's turned. It was basically <laughs> you. You're being really funny. You're a, right? you're a turncoat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Leon have done four in a row. Um, for the Champions League um, they've also won the French League consecutively for 13 seasons um, oh. they're the best funded team the best funded women's team in Europe um, and one of their best players is not going to the well t technically she is the, she has the Ballon d'Or the best yeah. player not going to the World Cup um, her team Norway have qualified but she has decided to set. Well, she's decided to step away in 2017. Like, how difficult a decision do you think that would have been for someone like that? We'll get back to their amazing ex exploits either. But I just think it's really interesting, um, yeah, uh, making that stand. Yeah, like I think it's it's very sort of um, noble to do that. Like, and it, when somebody with such a high profile and somebody who's so good, like it's the right person to do it. If that makes yeah. sense as well, because it's like. This is not the same, but you know when Roy Keane left Ireland, the World yeah. Cup came up in 2002 and half the country wanted him back and you know, they didn't want to do the World Cup without Roy Keane and like, yeah. this is the same. Any fan of the Norwegian football team 
is going to be asking where the hell is the Ballon d'Or winner? Like, you know, yeah. like it doesn't make any sense. And if it is over something like Roy Keane, there's obviously a dispute that people were divided on, but this is something that nobody should really be divided on. Like, this is just about pay and paying the women's national team the same amount of money that you're paying the men's I think, I, I, think think they they have, I think they have the, the they signed, um, some they sign something an, an agreement happened so I think they are or very similar to equally funded but the the issue that Hedeberg had was they're funded the same but in other aspects there's a definite dispar there's a definite disparity between like I think it's something to do with training and like she said herself quote it was an easy decision to step away yeah. that's like yeah. huge well that's for me I think that's, and that's yeah and like sorry and the, but the, the money sort of is one thing like you mm. know, the sort of pay per play is, is just one issue but it, like if you take the example of the US women's team at the minute who are like seeking legal advice about the amount of money that's been spent on them in terms of promotion yeah. and it's nowhere near the level of the men's team you know so Again, we're always talking about like you know trying to get people the same opportunities and you know give people their to be their seen. fair dues. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and if you're not even putting in the same amount of marketing money, then what chance are you giving people from the off? Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't like that's. I kind of touched on it last week. If young girls aren't seeing it, it's not being promoted. Like, how are you supposed to perpetuate? How how is yeah. it? Yeah, it's exactly. I actually am very surprised to hear that she said that that was an easy decision. You know, I when I first heard this, I was like, that's such. An impressive decision for her to make because obviously playing for your country and representing your country is such a privilege and I can only imagine how it feels like I love representing the place I'm from my county so I can only imagine how amazing it is to represent Ireland and like it's such a privilege and you'd feel such pride doing it I would have seen that as something that would have been a very difficult decision but she obviously feels very strong strongly about it and no but it like you said no better person to to take that stance mm. than the person with the highest profile and it probably was something that was difficult to do but then again if she's coming from a situation where leon leon are treated so well they're really well funded in respect to the other teams in the league it's probably very difficult for her to come back to norway where the same level of respect isn't there it isn't there yeah, like because well, with Leon, they basically have the a core setup of the French women's team that are going to the the World Cup. Then you've got some outstanding Dutch players, uh, Van der Staden, um, also. Well, I, I think one of one of the players that I like, I've I've watched Man City a few times a couple of seasons ago, and and Lucy Bronze, the Engl the yeah. English fullback, like she is unbelievable. That so pass she like, played for the third goal was something else. Like just to put that bend and whip around the whole yeah. defense from the right hand side. And like you said, you know, the, the best players make it look sometimes yeah. easy. Like she's very aggressive, athletic, is able to hold on to the ball, but is always pushing forward all the time. And playing against somebody like that can be a pain in the ass and can be like intimidating. So like <clears throat> I know we're veering wildly off here, but in terms of who... Wouldn't be who, like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcus, in terms of who I'm looking forward to seeing in the World Cup, I think like she's definitely like one of the players I prefer, like, yeah. like to see do well. And then obviously Scotland being in there would be one that I'd have to kind of cheer for as well. So, like, this, their, their, their manager, Jean-Michel... Uh, or at least I'm desperate at pronouncing anything, so apologies to any French people that are listening or anyone that speaks French that knows I'm butchering it. Um, he's basically outspending every other team um, with, with huge domestic success. So they've only, they've only lost two league games in nine seasons. I, like, I can't, there's, no, there's nothing else to compare it to. That, that, I think that's unprecedented. Yeah. And as well, back to Hederberg, I think that's the first hat trick in a Champions League final in like 50 years from from either gender like these are and and it's it was a fantastic game and stuff to watch I'm I'm getting to a point don't worry and um, a lot of a lot of some people have actually some of their players have been criticized for basically Leon coming in as the big wallet in in women's mm -hmm. football and picking and choosing the best players and bringing them into the squad like what what would your thoughts do you think that's good for for soccer in Europe or the situation with soccer is Barcelona have money so they are well within their capabilities to try and do the same thing it's just that Leon were the first team by the sounds of it to respect that side of the game and want to treat it as equal like all these soccer clubs have huge amounts of money like they it's not that Leon are just you know 
Barcelona would have the money to compete in that in that sense. It's it's not a situation like obviously there is some clubs that are better off, but there definitely would be clubs out there that can treat their that will be in a position to treat their women's teams the same way as Leon have, and they're just not. Oftentimes, if um when um <laughs> soccer player was here, Steph, Rose. Steph <laughs> when Steph was here, sorry Steph, when Steph was here, she was speaking about. Um, whenever like a men's team go down, the first thing they do is cut the women's women's team. You know what I mean? That's yeah. horrendous. So there is opportunities for these soccer teams to to do what Leon are doing. They're just choosing not to. And I think Leon should continue to attract all the best players with all the money. And nobody is going to be in a position to to compete until somebody commits like that. Uh, until they all start to commit like that. And why shouldn't they lead the charge? I don't think it's a situation where, oh, what do people want them to do? Stop funding the ladies team, make it more competitive. I it's think, ridiculous. yeah, I think ridiculous. it's a matter of, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not a matter of Leon, uh, Leon being like, oh, we should stem. I think it should be like, this is the bar that they have it's said, set, yeah. you have to climb it. This is like, that's what the best teams have done. Like in rugby, the All Blacks, this is what you need to do to be the best, climb it. Mm. And I think, I think the criticism that Leon are getting is it's too bad. Like I think if you get that call being like, do you want to play for Leon? Yes, that I is do. a testament to how good you are, which is, and, and you want to play at the best because you know as well, if you're, if you're training with the, the Lucy Bronze and the Hedderbergs and you'll become better yourself too. So why not? Like that takes a little while. And I know we kind of tend to talk about it a bit, I would have a, like in a previous episodes, but if you like make proper investment not only will it like help directly that team, but like in general football, it, it'll be better. They play an outstanding yeah, in class that place. Yeah, exactly. And then they had like over 19,000 people in Budapest uh, going to the game. They had like, I think one of the girls on the, uh, one of the women on the team was actually from there as well. It's amazing to like lift the trophy yeah. at home is something really special. So I think, yeah, it's, it's to everyone else it has to kind of step up. Like yeah, if you're and, and they're they're treated like I think there was a quote they're treated like the the globe trotters of women's sport because they can like pick and choose. But like you were saying, every other team can do that. Like prime example for me is Liverpool. Their men's team are doing outstanding. They're extremely well funded. I'm sure they have the budget for this for it. But their women's team are not doing so well. Why? Like there is yeah. It's not lack of talent. It's put your money where your mouth is. It's kind of. Yeah, that's a strong stance on it. But sticking to my yeah. guns, Connor. Sticking to my guns. Anyway, uh, we have to uh, move along from soccer, and we're going straight to our golf correspondent, <laughs> Neve <Neve> McAvoy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose just well done to Leona McGuire during during the week. She had another professional win on the Symmetra Tour. It's really it Symmetra yeah. Tour. Yeah. Oh, wait, I, oh, wait, I'm confirming it. I, you know. Yeah, I mean. I, I, it's one of those words that I just read and never have to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, she won. She won by five strokes. Like an, a really impressive performance by her. I think she she's just gonna be a name that hopefully we're hearing more and more often in the media and stuff. As I said, you know, golf is a sport that. That's a young bit boys playing it, play it growing up, and it absolutely should be a case where where girls are playing it. You know, it's 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 a real social sport. It's something that's used a lot in in business. You know what I mean? If if it's if it's a situation where we have somebody who's really really good in the women's side of things and trying to kind of break down those mar barriers, so it's seen not just as a kind of masculine sport, but as a, obviously she's an excellent female player. So it's great stuff by her. We've been we've been challenged to a golf off as well, Conan. I don't know if you know this. It's pretty, no, please tell me more. It's pretty big news. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna give that a crack. Where are we heading to? We're, I actually don't know where we're. We're sure. golfing. <laughs> so, who, who's in this golf off? Um, so we're gonna get a band together, and we haven't really decided yet. It's obviously the elite of the elite. That's not said right. The elite of the elite, um, and me. <laughs> so um looking forward and to that. Me, I <laughs> played in um, yeah, Marcus, you're you you know what a handicap and pa you're what is it under you are yeah that par four. <laughs> she are par four. I'm a par four. That yeah. worries me though. That she's like I haven't played in years. It's like you know she probably had a handicap of seven yeah. like three years ago and then hasn't played in three years. No, yeah, no, I had to give it. I had to choose football because the kind of 
Do you know, it's, it can be very frustrating when you miss that <laughs> point. <It's> like, <laughs> at least in um, <laughs> football, you can give someone a big shoulder or something. And <laughs> yeah, that, uh, we have to be very composed and stuff. So fair play to Leona. She's obviously a very composed, chill person. <laughs> yeah, and, or you can blame your teammates. That's the joy of playing a team sport oh, as well. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> like, Where, what were you doing with that pass? Yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I do anyway. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to be chatting to Irish hockey coach Sean Dancer as well as um, goalkeeper extraordinaire Aisha McFarren. But first, we're going to have a look at um, AIG. They've launched a new campaign, Effort is Equal. Have a look. This game, rooted in our history, enriched by our communities, passed down from generation to generation. A family tradition where family is defined by more than just our DNA. Players and fans, coming from all walks of life, remain united, even after the whistle has blown. Our devotion is rekindled every time we step on that pitch. Lit by the embers of what drives our team, our county, our home. Strength, dedication, skill. In this jersey, we are not defined by us or them. Only us, together. Because in this jersey, effort is equal. AIG, supporting equality in sport. Right, Sean, so you were born in Australia, you spent 10 years in New Zealand. What do you think of Ireland? <laughs> well, um, I've been, been to Ireland a couple of times, to Dublin, but to be honest, I've only been to the, uh, the Guinness factory, so uh, I'm sure there's a lot more for me to, to get to know about Ireland, and, and I'm certainly looking forward to the opportunity to travel around and, and get to know Ireland. Well, it's a good place to start, the Guinness factory, all right. Um, I suppose your links to Ireland, you had the, it was a bit of a flip-flop between yourself and Graham Shaw yep. with the New Zealand job. Yeah, so obviously um, very interesting, weird scenario to be in, but um, I've known Graham for a while now. We actually played against each other in the Belgium Hockey League many, many years ago. So, um, and I was lucky enough to have the opportunity when Graham came in to, to sit down and have a really good, honest conversation with him around everything. And, and I think he's a good guy, so we had a really good uh, chat about everything. I suppose you mentioned Belgium there, you've been all around the world in terms of hockey in yep. Belgium, Australia. How does Ireland hockey, I suppose, stack up against those? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, I suppose, to be determined. Obviously, my first uh, week in the, in the role, so really getting to know Ireland and, and Ireland hockey. I mean, from a distance, I've always admired what Ireland have done. I think um, they're certainly, obviously, on the edge of Europe, but have the opportunity to, to travel and compete. And that uh, Irish mentality of, of being nice and tough, will, I certainly think, um, uh, is a good attribute to have and, and will help them on the world stage. Certainly, yeah. certainly, yeah. So uh, I've always, I mean, uh, I think I've always admired uh, that they get stuck in, they work hard, uh, they've got that right attitude towards high performance. So I think that's certainly something that I've admired. I suppose the targets for your job is the, the 2020 Olympics are coming up. Yep. So it's qualification for that. Yep. Is that your... I suppose the first aim really to yeah certainly I mean it's it's a uh, it's a it's a tough period like the next six months is is really tough with the two qualification tournaments and and the Euros and then obviously qualification for for Tokyo and and then the plan develops from there but um, it, it's also a really exciting opportunity not many coaches get the opportunity to come in so close to an Olympics and and really start to try and push their team forward and and then qualify and then once we're at the Olympics um, then uh, who knows what will happen from there. When things went so went went so well for Ireland in the World Cup, I suppose nearly it's your job to sort of dampen expectations <laughs> a little bit, is it? Well, not not necessarily at all. I think uh, obviously with um, the result that the excellent result that Ireland had at the World Cup, uh, it also develop, develops a lot of self confidence. And for me as a coach, it is really important that the players and the group have a lot of confidence, and and they are a very good hockey team. So uh, for me, we want to just build on the back of that. And and also what's very um, pleasing is on the back of that becomes all the sponsorship with park development and, and now the girls are able to train a little bit more uh, towards a full-time athlete. And what, I suppose where is the, the ultimate aim, like your, your target, where do you think Ireland hockey can, can go? 
Yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's a big question, but uh, in the end, I think eighth is is a great starting point. My my goal is certainly to uh, progress that uh, world ranking from eighth to as high as possible, uh, and to do that, we need to qualify and then start to be successful at the Olympics. Lovely, Sean. Best of luck with the job, anyway. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. Cheers. So, Aisha, you were the best goalie at the World Cup, and you won an All Star for your college. How do you not have a big head after all that? <laughs> I've definitely got a very good support network around me who tell me to get off my high horse. But uh, no, it's all, like for me, it was just about going out and performing for my team. So I, I do the best I can and somehow they acknowledge me for that. But yeah, everyone kind of brought me down back, back down to earth fairly quickly. It must have been a great honour as well, though, to win them individual awards. Like. Yeah, for sure. It's, but it's definitely not just for me. Um, I have a massive support group around me and especially Grace, the other goalie and Nidge, our goalie coach. They, it's the three of us who work together and I think no matter what, I wouldn't have achieved anything without them. So going back to the start, you, you did a bit, played a bit of soccer, you did a bit of <laughs> athletics and there was Irish dancing in yeah. as well. So how, how did it come to being a hockey goalie, I suppose? Honestly, who knows? I think I was just that little bit crazy. I ended up throwing the pads on. I think playing soccer helped. Um, my teacher was like, oh, here, like, who, does anyone want to do this? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. But yeah, somehow I ended up putting the pads on and haven't taken them off since. Jeez. And would you find that, I suppose, like, the dancing, which are, I suppose the feet would probably help with that, and then with soccer as well, the movement, like, it would all probably help. Yeah, I definitely think it's all kind of came together. Um, I've always kind of said, because I played so many sports, I think it's helped me succeed. But yeah, who knows, to be honest, but it's definitely, I feel it's definitely helped me. They always say that, um, that goalies, they have to be a little bit mad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you find that, I suppose, you'd have people telling you, like your natural instinct might be, to go back from a shot, but you have to jump it forward and let it hit you. Like, would you find that people would be telling you, geez, it'd be easier to play out the field or something? Or Yeah, so I did try and start the field, but there was too much running involved for that. So I was like, I'm gonna take a step back and just stand in the goal. And then half the time I find I end up shutting my eyes anyway, which probably isn't the best thing to tell everyone. But uh, no, it's, um, yeah, you definitely have to have a, screw, a few screws loose to stand in there and get hit with them balls. And would there be, what would the training be like, I suppose, to be a goalie? Would it be, I remember I was watching a film, um, oh, what was it called, was it Mad Swing or something, and they were tying the goalie to the, <laughs> to the, to the nets to make them stand in front of the, the shot, like, would it be something like that that it'd be? No, I think we've probably moved on a little bit from that. It's a, there's a, a lot of movement, which is very surprising for a goalie. Most of the time people think we just kind of stand there and hopefully get in the way, but no, there's definitely a lot more movement, up, getting up and down a lot. It's a good job I go to the gym, kind of comes in handy when doing that, but it's very, um, very interesting when you look at it, that's all I can say. And I suppose then when there's so much movement with all the different bits of gear you're wearing, if you're playing in warm conditions, it must be tough, tough oh, all going. It definitely gets very hot in that. I think yesterday I was out and it was 10 degrees outside and it was still sweltered. So whenever you get up to that 25, 30 degrees, you're definitely sweating a little bit and you might have to wash the gear after a few sessions. And I suppose when, when you're in the middle of a big game, like a World Cup semi-final or something like that, with the heat and with the crowd going mad, it's a lot to sort of, a lot to take in, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You're just trying to focus on the game, but at points you end up kind of zoning out because you're just like, what is happening here? I'm, I'm sweating, there's so much noise, and you end up just kind of staring around you a few times. And but, I suppose uh, the, the penalty shootout was probably, the, it was India and Spain then, so you were probably in the centre of it all then, weren't you? Yeah, it was, um, I ended up, so whenever I wasn't in the goal for the shoot, I was like standing in the corner and I had people behind me being like, just do this, like make sure you stay up. And I'm like, all right, do you want to get in the pads then? Like, so it was kind of fun just joking back and forth with them, but then it was obviously trying to stay concentrated and whatnot at the same time. That must have been an unbelievable experience, that like getting to the, the world final and all of that like really like to look back on yeah it's still it's still kind of weird it all happened like I was chatting with a few of the girls the other day and it was like like we somehow did that like we actually did and yeah it kind of we I would say we probably stumbled our way into the final through luck of other teams not performing but you know what we'll take it like if they're not going to do their job we'll definitely do ours and get there and did you enjoy I suppose the pressure that came in the quarterfinal and the semi-final with being the goalie like you had probably the biggest job out of them all because you were involved for every single one of the penalties like did you enjoy that pressure oh that definitely that? like no matter what like i love putting pressure on myself i want to like i want to perform and so to have that added pressure of yeah this could get you into a semi-final or in the final of the world cup and everyone's eyes are on you yes it's fun but 
yeah, it's pretty intense trying to stay calm during that for sure. And then after it all, I suppose, coming home, it must have been fairly surreal. Then we all saw the video of you singing All I Want for Christmas. Like it was a fairly mad Christmas for you, wasn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Having Christmas twice last year was fairly decent. But uh, yeah, coming home, all, like we were hearing the stories of everything that was going on. And then to actually get to Dame Street and see all those people out there, we were like, is this actually happening or are we just dreaming this like? But it was, it was insane. And I suppose the aim to kick on now with the Olympics coming up. Yeah, like the, this is the next step for us. Like we have to, we have to perform, and we're very excited at the challenge. Most of the time, as Irish sports stars, we kind of get caught being the underdog of everything. But to now go in with a huge target on our back and people out to beat us, we're excited about that and about the opportunity that it presents. Lovely. I'll do the finest. Cheers. Thanks, million, Aisha. Okay, now comes the most important part of this whole episode 2019 <laughs> division one team of the little ladies national football league do you think i gave that enough attention and yeah i actually thought you were saying the most important part of 2019 oh, which well, it probably is there's an argument to be made that it is possibly yeah. maybe but like if if we carried the opinion of certain people on this pan panel then you know <laughs> well, respect the journalists all over this panel which give me yeah. a break <laughs> okay right so we're gonna we're gonna because it's such an honour, we'll, we'll have to name out the team. Yeah, I actually don't know who's on it. The whole team. We won't just say, need McAvoy, need McAvoy, need McAvoy, and you should be everywhere. Okay, so in the goals, between the sticks, Martina O'Brien from Cork. Then two, uh, Martha Byrne from Dublin. Three, Hannah Looney from Cork. Four, Melissa Duggan from Cork. Five, Shauna Kelly from Cork. Six, Sinead Burke from Galway. Seven, Charlotte Cooney from Galway. Eight, Louise Ward from Galway. Nine, Neve Cotter from Cork. 10, Karen Guthrie from Donegal. Neve McAvoy, number 11, Dublin in <laughs> bold. Uh, 12, Ashley Mooney, Tipperary. Sorry, I felt like I did a high and then I went like down for that, but like Ashley, that's still class. Maloney. 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 Yeah. Maloney. <laughs> no bother. <laughs> no. <laughs> Great. 13, Emer Scally from Cork. 14, Roisin Leonard from Galway. And 15, Orla Flynn from Cork. It's not a bad team. It's not a bad, not a bad team. Okay, you, okay, this is difficult. We've definitely put you on the spot. So <laughs> just take, take it. It's a, it's a good compliment. Yeah. Nod your head. Thank you. Thanks okay. very much. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think obviously if I wasn't in it, it'd be easier to speak about. But I think it's a really balanced team. My Cork have seven there, and they definitely dominated the national league. You know, they came out all guns blazing. They had a bit of a blip against Tipperary, and but. They definitely dominated. Then I think Galway have four. The four girls were really impressive. Um, Asha Maloney, she's the only player on that team who her team didn't make the semi-final. Mm. Like she just has, is so impressive and had such a, an impressive. Um, she had such an impressive league campaign. You know, she she would have put up some huge individual performances, some huge scores. So it's really impressed by her. Like her team didn't even make the semi-final. You know, she. It takes a lot to stand out in the early stages. Well, yeah, they did. They beat Cork, you know, Tipperary beat, beat the team that went, went on. on to win it. So, yeah, she they had, they had a great league campaign. Um, then Karen was brilliant as well. She was <laughs> excellent against against us in the first round. Raging. <laughs> 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 okay. But she's you... great. No, she was great. And then, yeah, that's. That's all I have to say about that. And then Eve McAvoy. She was whopper. class. She was brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. I'll just own it. Okay, so we'll just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> brilliant. Um, if you guys had to pick the ultimate five aside, so you're going to stick with football here. However, there are stipulations to this game. You can only have one soccer player, one Gaelic player, one camogie player, uh, one rugby player, and like... A another. Yeah, A another. That's good. Who's going first? Are we naming five in a row, our team in a row? Okay, goalkeepers. Let's go goalkeepers first. I have no, between the sticks. your team. Let's hear your team. Okay, so between the sticks, went for a hockey player, McFarren. Yeah. No. Safe as houses, World Cup hero, and has extra big gloves, so <laughs> set. <laughs> then um, defensive mode, Sinead Goldrick, Crazy. classy defender. Crazy pants. Yeah, and then I'm going to go with a bit of an enforcer role beside her. Um, Ayla Sheegan, not great at football. She will admit that herself. But physical. She'll get, <laughs> she'll get stuck in. She might miss the ball, but she won't miss your shins. Okay, then we're going to go um, 
a little bit of pace in the wing. Uh, Phil Healy gonna gonna give her mm -hmm. just kick the ball ahead. Run on. Go two. for it. Yeah. Try and play offside against us, lads. Um, Hederberg is going to be up there as well. You know, I think there's <laughs> there's space for my ball the ball door. Well, that's soccer player. I get to pick. So oh. yeah, fair enough. And then um, Kamogi is where I'm struggling. I'm not too sure. Um, I think I might go with. Do you know what? I might go with uh, Kate Mack, Kilkenny, Kamogi player. Solid, wiry, tiny. Sound. Sound. <laughs> yeah, that's who I'm going with. That's I my ultimate like balance there, like, you know. I'm, that's fine. Hedberg and Kate Mack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. There's no chemistry though. Um, you're lucky you've got Aisha in goals because she's going to be busy. Uh, these would all go on an unreal <laughs> session. Yeah, I'm telling you now. Ayla Sheegan with the Jaeger bombs. McFarren in there with like big two litre bottles of cider. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> that is a crack team. Not only will they do damage on the field, but also off. Look at that, that screams coppers. Okay, you guys. Right, I'll give you mine. This is this is a this is a team that's designed around the system. So we've got a good counter attacking <laughs> thing going on oh, here. God. So we're ready to take on anyway. This yeah. Thing, all right. They were just cast yours aside. But what are yeah. you thinking about it? And I've got a bit of um, versatility in goals. We've got Lindsay Peet in her basketball form. <laughs> in, in her basketball form. <laughs> <laughs> the basketballer Lindsay Peet. The basketballer Lindsay. Okay, right. Good Fair. with her hands. I like yeah. what you did there. Okay. Good Made reactions, work. and we might need her soccer skills at some stage. Maybe push, push her outfield if things okay. if she hits the fan. But I don't think it will with this team because okay. we've got three defensive-minded players in. We've got Lucy Bronze uh, as the soccer sort of correspondent. Perfect. We've got Jenny Murphy. Oh. Sort of holding the defence mm -hmm. together there because mm -hmm. I like what I heard. So uh, Stephanie Roots seemed to hate being marked by Jenny Murphy, and Neve McAvoy doesn't have a, a lot of good things to say no. about you either. <laughs> Thanks, <So>. friend. <laughs> Thanks, girl. And that's exactly what I need in this okay. team. Okay. Yeah. And um, I've got Ashton Thompson there as well. Obviously, both through the defence, and then it's basically all down to Noel Healy to get some goals on the Okay, break. great. So basically, right. that 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 backline screams to me yellow card city. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, and then. Okay. And then it's just hit it on the break and Will Healy will win the race and away we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, that's... Well, I'll accept that. That doesn't scream balance this to me. This is five side guys. You're both talking about hitting players into the space. <laughs> what space? I, what? Are we playing on a full-size um, pitch with listen, five Listen, if we play it, our tactics right and run some angles, there's going to be space, Mark. Okay, let's hear what <laughs> yeah, your I team is. Like, cool. Myself and Conan have clearly thought about I this. I have Kira Trant because she is... A legend, sound legend. Okay, <laughs> and, and what are the and attributes that make her? Do you think like solid goals? She's an unbelievable keeper. Okay. Two all stars, just unreal. Okay, all will, she, will she be able to hold two liters of cider in? <laughs> Sorry, I yeah, I'd put yeah. my money on her. <laughs> then my soccer person is Louise Quinn. So I just picked mine based on all the people that I fangirl from those different sports. Okay, so I don't know how the dynamics going to be, but because they're all sound, I think it would work. I okay, think get there eventually. <laughs> Um, Senna Niopa, I don't really know how to say her second name, none of the one of those names that I just read and never have to say out loud. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Evans and Aileesh McSweeney, because she's quick and sound. Okay. <laughs> that works. I'm surprised you didn't put yourself in after you no. got number 11 <laughs> on the little team of the year. Excellent spot there, Colin, uh, excellent spot. Listen, let's all just agree that mine is better than the two of yours and we'll move on. <laughs> Quickly, <laughs> quickly. Also, I'd I'd really like if other people would like come up with class five aside, like the ultimate five aside. Yeah. See it. Tweet us with hashtag play by play. The ultimate five aside. But you can't have two people from one sport. Yeah, it has to be a mix of sports. Um. Okay, so now we're moving on to um. Fuck, sorry. Can we put there for a sec? I didn't actually. I went to the wrong. One. Um. Are we going? We'll go straight into the. Falau thing? Yeah. So I would like to go, so Israel Falau, guys. I'm just getting into it. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So, um, moving on to less cool, amazing teams. Uh, Israel Falau. What a dude. It's a drastic shift. Definitely less sound. Oh, what, <laughs> what an idiot. Um, so, um, earlier today, it emerged that he won't appeal uh, Rugby Australia's decision to sack him over his controversial social media posts um, some of them quote those that are living in sin will end up in hell unless he repent drunks homosexuals adulterers fornicators thieves atheists hell awaits you 
Um, if you haven't already read Lindsay Pete's article, she did a really good article in the Sports Chronicle. I'd highly recommend you check it out. It was really good. Um, I thought really well written and something that is very important. Now, like, yeah, I just, I think he's a bit of a dumbass. Like, freedom of speech is an argument that people keep on chucking out, but I think there's a difference. There's a free, like, you can say what you want, but that doesn't me stop me from thinking or having the opinion that you're an absolute asshole. Like, there's a, there's a freedom of speech and then there's a freedom of consequence. And what he said was wrong. It doesn't stand with the values of the Australian uh, Union, rugby union. And so they fired him, which is fair enough. If you sign a contract, this is, the, this is what you need to follow when you go against it. Yeah. He already did it last year. Um, went out and did it again. I just think... Stupid move for him, bigoted, and I think the team is better off. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know, this thing where people use their social media to, do you know what I mean? I just go on social media and look at cakes being, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, I don't understand why people feel the need to put up these, like, hate, this hate speech on, essentially what it is, mm. is hate speech on social media. Even... I don't know. Yeah, I just feel as though, you know, this freedom of speech thing, that was all well and good when you couldn't hit millions and millions of people, like millions and millions of people wouldn't see this one thing you were saying. Like you'd usually just say it to one person, they'd hear it. If it was a mistake, you could retract it. Like this is something he put up. Everybody saw. Like it absolutely wasn't cool. Do you know, um, he's in a position where he's a role model. You know, he's a sporting role model. And he's essentially using his platform for hate speech I don't know I you know sometimes what I would think about him as well is sometimes in these professional sports people leave their education and stuff and they go into like a professional environment it happens all the time with the soccer I'm not saying this is a broad sweeping thing where people are uneducated but it's just that they're not as exposed to the outside world and maybe they haven't being like met as uh, many people from different places and they're kind of not as open-minded they go into these clubs at the age of 14 or 15 and they're in this small environment where they're not exposed to new things like differences of opinion you know it's kind of like maybe an echo chamber I'm not saying this is the case for everyone obviously yeah. I'm not saying none of the Irish would be out there yeah. like this but sometimes I think this is the type of thing that happens I'm not saying it's men either like I'm sure it happens with women when they are in a situation where they leave their families leave their education essentially at like 13 14 15 and they're just in this bubble and they they don't have a chance to grow mm -hmm. if that makes sense and we'll i think look. as well no one i'm not no, sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely not, not abdicating it for him but i do think that this is something that we see in in professional players sometimes where they just ha have a lack of exposure exposure a lack of experience and they're still in that kind of mindset of an adolescent you know and it, but it's absolutely not cool I'm not saying that that's a mm. reason why and that's he should know better and he should you should look to broaden your horizons mm. educate yourself like meet meet new people dif people from yeah. different the, the broaden horizon thing is a, the important point there because it, it, that's something that you're not getting to do if you're constantly in the same yeah, system yeah same all the time. setup and yeah when you're representing Australia like uh, imagine the sort of eclectic array of people that you're yeah, exactly. Yeah, from so many different countries, different backgrounds, different sexuality. Like it's unbelievable. Like Australia is probably the most like sort of eclectic in the whole world, and yeah. he's representing them. He's wearing the shirt, and people are supporting him. And yeah, like you said, uh, Neve is a, a role model, and I don't think he really gets that. And you know, unless he thinks that that is him being a role model, which it absolutely isn't. But unless he's like, I'm going to use my platform for for my beliefs but that's what I was trying to get at at the very start like everybody's entitled to to believe what they want but as yeah. you said when you're don't like that that potentially if you're like he's he's one of the best rugby players that I've ever seen yeah. he is unbelievable at, at what he does he's a he's a star he's, def, he's not my favourite rugby player that is <laughs> yeah Dave Pocock what a legend and, and completely they play on the same team and completely different Personalities. personalities and how he goes about it like you know um, like you would admire Pocock as a man as well as a rugby player what he does off the field but Falao was in a position of privilege 
and he can use his voice for good. And if he can't, then just shut up and keep those bigoted, ignorant opinions to yourself. I think as well as that, you've got like, when when you are when you hear a, a role model speak like that, and I suppose with young people as well, when, you know, some of them could be going through a difficult time yeah. when it comes to their sex sexuality, and hearing that is hugely harmful. Like, that's just stupid. I, I like, I, I hear what you're saying about you come in and you can potentially get a bubble, but like people, like I'm glad, I'm glad that this is, because he, he did get a warning. He got a warning and he knew the consequence of it and he still put himself and this opinion before the team. And um, I think Will Genia, the scrum half for the Melbourne Rebels and again, like a, an Aussie player, he came out and said it was selfish moving aside from all the hateful stuff that Flau has said, like in terms of what he's done for the team, that's not uh, like going into a World Cup year, now they've lost a player. I just, it's just, it actually is so stupid. Like I think some of the decisions, so he's he's decided not to appeal it, but what can kind of happen is he can he can try and bring it to the high court, but that's not going to be until 2019 or 2020, 20, it'll take 2020, 20, 2020, 2021 until that scene. So he will not be representing Australia. Now, potentially he could be representing because his parents are Tongan. Um, three years down the line, he could represent another um, yeah, country. But. Great. <laughs> but do you know this, this freedom of speech thing? Freedom of speech is not designed to just relentlessly protect every single piece of speech. It's designed to protect your speech, to protect my speech. It's not designed to protect the speech of an idiot, no matter what he says. Yeah. It's not there. Like, you know, it, it means that you can say something. It doesn't mean that you can say something and it can't be challenged. Yeah. You can say something and nobody can sort of hold you sort of up for some sort of consequence because of that. Yeah, like, like if, if you, you, if you, if you come something... out and say about drunks and homosexuals and atheists, like fornicators, and you tell them that hell awaits you, doesn't mean that you can just say that and then like nobody will challenge you. That's mm. that's not what freedom of speech is about. It's it's about making sure that me and you and everybody isn't shut down from saying things. Yeah. But when you do say something and it's something like that, then it will be challenged. It's like that that's that's a proper world. <laughs> you know, that's how the world should work. And too bloody right. You can say it Falao, but I have the right to think that you're an asshole for saying it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh well, um fair play, Lindsay, by the way, yeah. yeah. So um, we'll have her on. We'll have her on. She'll uh, she'll wreck all her heads. She's great. <laughs> she's great crack, yeah. So I was chatting to Lindsay earlier today, and she's like, "Oh yeah, and no, I'll definitely, I'll definitely come on the show. We can bully Mac her together." So <laughs> I've no doubts. <laughs> yeah. So she's telling me some of the nicknames that uh, she had for you. So we'll save that for when there's a camera. It's gonna be great. <laughs> super, super excited about it. Um, as well as that, we've got um, the Tala Harris, the AFL player. It'll Taylor, be Bethel, yeah. yeah. Taylor. Taylor. Maybe. I don't, I'm just having a guess. No, I'm, well. I'm like, listen, I've been <laughs> getting, I've been Taylor. getting, I've been getting everyone's name wrong. Let's just continue that. Um, her photo, which don't have it right now, but it'll, it'll flash up. Um, maybe it will. Can we get like a? Can I do one of these things <laughs> and then it's maybe get it to flash up? up. <laughs> Class. Um, anyway, her. It's been nominated for photo of the year, which is pretty snazzy. Um, or it's been named as a finalist, sorry. So the stunning shot of Harris in full flight is one of 15 photos that are in contention to win. Um, she took a fair amount of stick when that photo first came out. You guys remember? Yeah, yeah. it wasn't even stick so much as like, yeah, people was, weren't uh, yeah. saying you were, you're bad at your sport or the type of things you usually harassment. see. Yeah. In, in a, it was actually sexual harassment, like what people were saying. saying and the... the when the picture was originally put up, the account that put it up took it down because they were like, oh yeah. my God, they didn't expect all the comments that came under it. Um, they were shocked and then they kind of got a bit of a backlash for taking down the photo. And everyone was kind of like, you shouldn't have taken it down. You should have been, and they kind of came back and said, we actually took it down because of all the really negative comments. They, they had their, they were trying to do the right yeah. thing, but obviously it wasn't right. They should have kind of left it up there as something, because absolutely she should be proud of herself. 
serious techers and I just I see, I see that 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 yeah, I'm just like yeah. I, I see that picture and I'm like as Nothing's well as me, I'm, like, I'm just like oh god no oh the pain no that was yeah. just yeah no right super right impressive board. athlete yeah did but, you see uh, the little the Harris challenges that were going around after they had yeah. like um, yeah. there's videos of like people like up over Oz or whatever and any kind of Aussie Rules fans actually attempting to do her kick as well it was really nice yeah that's yeah. cool that's really I that's tried cool. and uh, no <laughs> yeah the jeans were too tight that's what I'll say <laughs> it was yeah. interesting like th that picture came out around the same time as Sports File caught this amazing photo of Sean O'Shea playing with Kerry one of the first league games of this year and he was taking a sideline and the photographer was right behind him so you just get this amazing shot of his leg just going right up and there's a couple of sort of you know I don't know what the... That was outside the, the right, wasn't it? Yeah. Everyone was saying he was like Maris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like Morris Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like a couple of them, like just little different phases of the shot and it goes oh, right yeah. up where his like, hamstring is fully extended and all we were doing was admiring the technique and admiring the, the muscle and it's like, yeah. look at the definition of his hamstring and his calves there, like, you know, yeah. and mm. what you should be doing with something like that, you know, and... Like Rather the, than, yeah, it did, it was sexualised, like, yeah. absolutely it was and it's just, it's just, sometimes you think women in sports come so far and then something like this happens and it's a bit of a realisation that <sighs> yeah no it has it yeah. has come so far but like that was so disappointing to see but then it did kind of go full circle and now everyone's like so supportive of it and everyone's talking about now what an amazing athlete she is so I suppose it did have a knock on effect in, in a sense that after all those negative comments and the way people were like that's not cool then it had probably a really positive effect on that sport. You know, that sport was talked about loads. Then everyone was then came back and said, don't mind those animals, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's so, so super impressive. So, but I suppose it would just be the hope that would be, would be something like that would come out. And the first things that people would be saying was, were like, but that's that freedom of speech thing again. That's social media, like mm -hmm. just people behind a keyboard. Like, I, I wonder what those people say to her face if she was holding that you know what I mean they absolutely wouldn't it's yeah. like this thing where people think they can say whatever they want when they're sitting behind their keyboard but um and they don't realize as well that there's a person behind that too I think it's just or they do yeah. realize and they don't care because they're so far removed from it and I do think trolls yeah trolls it's exactly what you were saying about the freedom of speech thing like you think about all what are they got the amendments in America the say the firearm one that was made hundreds of years ago when there wasn't automatic weapons and the freedom of speech one like if you think about that with social media and stuff like that was made when that was made when it wasn't so easy to speak to everyone in the world mm. with one tweet like say for example Don Donald Trump so these things need to, to just catch up yeah catch the up. amendments need to be Changed. Amended. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Changed. That's not worth nice it. For the sports show. <laughs> Mom, we've got like American kind of like little politics going on there. It's a good week. Got, like this is, yeah. Or nice, a bad week. Nice macker. Nice. So it's, uh, she's like, I feel like we've covered pretty much everything. Colin, any other bits that you want to chuck in there? No, you're doing a great um, job here, Jenny. Yeah. Just, I, just I, before we get into words, I just want to say how great you're doing today. It's oh, definitely been your best show. God, thanks. If you are adjudicating, I just want you to know that you've been absolutely yeah. brilliant. And I did include you in my uh, five aside team as well, so just maybe bear that in mind as we move oh, that's on. That's actually well played. That's well played. I forgot about words of the week, but now... It's time. Now it's on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right, our quote. If I find out that, you've been, that this has been rigged, Oh, I will be very upset, by the way. <laughs> Go. <clears throat> uh, when our world is telling girls and women who they should be or who or what they should look like, it is critical that we empower those girls and young women to be confident with who they are. I'll read it again because I read it really badly. When our world is telling girls and women who they should be or what they should look like, it is critical that we empower those girls and young women to be confident with who they are. Serena Williams. No. Oh. <laughs> you looked at me as if it was right there. I keep on doing that. I'm really sorry. But no, it is not Serena Williams. Athletics. Tanya Sullivan. It's not athletics. So it's somebody across the water. <laughs> Olympian. I won't say Mia Hamm then. <laughs> <laughs> She's about to say Mia Hamm when you said that. Olympian. Which water are we talking about? Are we talking about the Atlantic or the Irish Sea? Uh, we're talking about Just the Atlantic. Oh no, not athletics. Um, no, Olympi not. Olympics. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll give you a clue. It's a sport that is 
not popular in Ireland. Winter sport? Yeah. She's won one gold medal and two silver medals. Lindsay Vaughn? No. Uh, I was about to say if it was Lindsay Vaughn, that's cheating because she already <laughs> came off. It's not cheating. I have the right to pick who I want. Winter I can see the freedom of speech. I have the what, freedom of... What is your obsession with winter sports? Yeah. I don't... Although you're doing great, like it's but, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. A really no to that little. Do you know, little, little, little I, all I know is Lindsay Vaughn. I okay. don't even know her name. I just knew she was. Um, she is. It's a team sport. It's ice hockey. Yes, we're on the right track. Do I know any ice hockey players in um, the whole world? And the answer would probably be no. It's the goon. That's what. <laughs> That's a great film, actually. <laughs> um, okay, so let me give you another... Uh, another. We ex- don't know. <laughs> it, it's Hillary it's Knight. Sh- it's Hillary Knight. Hillary <laughs> Knight? I was just about to say Hillary Knight. Great, okay, that's Ice another... Hockey. Yeah. No, Jen, give that's, us a chance. I think, I think me and Margaret get a point for that, and you get zero. Uh, yeah, negative no marks way. for Jen. On that note, we are going to end <laughs> promptly. Um, so zero points for you, zero points for you for that one. So you're both 1-1. One, one. You both have... Yeah. So you're both still sharing the lead. Two of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although Neve has won in four, but you know, I've got oh, <laughs> yeah, actually that's so, true. Yeah. That's true. You would not it's make you would not all. you would not that's make That's like saying that's like in football, just because I had four shots still makes it one off. No, it's like you play four times. You two games. shots I had four oh, shots. You played no, four times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you see you had more opportunity to make like the twenty nineteen. Uh, yeah, you'd more time to make the uh, team of the league than Conan because you obviously played more games. <laughs> So, um, okay, um, you guys both suck, but thanks so much for uh, coming on the show. Conan, cheers. Mackers, Saint. Um, Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, Tune in next week.